Um, and it is my pleasure now to introduce our first speaker for the day, um, Martin Agrup from CIPOS. So, I speak into this, yes. I'll be speaking about statistics. And in order to understand statistics, you first need to understand the meaning of life. So uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. We're in Copenhagen, and 200 years ago, approximately, uh, the Danish theologian and um, existentialist uh, philosopher, Søren Kierkegaard, roamed the streets of Copenhagen. And uh, one of the quotes that he's famous for is, is this one, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. Now, anyone who's had a hangover knows exactly what that means. But uh, a more subtle uh, uh, point here is also that it is a central part of the human experience uh, that uh, we experience things, and that happens through time. So the concept of time is central uh, to the human being. Okay? So does anyone know who this is? Or this? Exactly. You know? Uh, <laughs> That's, that's, that's all the same person, and you know, maybe someday he'll look like this, who knows. Um, and um, but, but somebody said, you, but, but the thing is, that little boy up there, very few people would have known. Uh, my mother insists that it's the same person that's at the very top there and at, at the bottom. Um, and the point is that we all, um, as people, know that the people we love, the people we care about, the people we feel we know are people we followed through a long time. So our closest friends are normally people we've known for a long time. So um, if you want to get to know a person, you need to study that person over a period of time. And that's also what doctors try to do. They, the, the patient comes in and the doctor tries to study that person as if the doctor had followed the person over a period, period of time. That's why we have a patient journal. And that's why the doctor says, so this ache in the stomach, how long have you had that? Have you had it before? Uh, have you, are you a smoker? Have you ever been a smoker? How well do you sleep? What do you eat, etc." Ask all these questions as if the doctor get to follow the person over time. And what the hell does that have to do with the statistics? Well, quite a lot. So, an example, let's look at this claim. In recent decades, most income growth has gone to the high income earners. Is that true or false? Let's look at it. This, these are all statistics for Denmark, but I'm sure most countries would show, well, a lot of countries would show similar results. Anyway, we have very good statistics for Denmark. Big Brother's been watching us for a long time. Uh, so so th this is... Um, so if you take the population and divide, divide them into income deciles, right? So you have the low income earners at the bottom. Um, you can see that over the period, the long period from 87 till now, that's pretty much true. The low income earners have had the lowest growth, or the, the lowest deciles have had the lowest growth in income. And if you look at a more recent period, it's even more the case, and it gets even worse if you look at the last 10 years. Disastrous income growth for, for the low uh, percentiles. Okay? So, QED, right. Except, who the hell is an income decile? I've never met such a person. So what are we talking about here? What we've been talking about until now is we've been looking at one group of people in, say, 2004, and comparing them to a different group of people in 2015. Because people don't stay permanently in an income decile. That's what life is about. Things change. We get more experienced. We get a new job. Things happen. And that's why it's interesting to follow people as if they were our friends, to get to understand a little bit about how they're doing. That's what statistics should be about. So let's instead look at the annual growth in disposable income of actual people. People who in the first year happen to be in a given income decile. What happens then? Then you get the exact opposite result. So the people who happen to be in the low income decile in the first year that we're looking at 
have had the highest income growth. It's not surprising because they want to have achieve income growth. Maybe they had little experience in the, in the first year. That's why they had low income. But it's not a subtle point. It's, it's very, very important to understand this and to look at, look at it this way instead of the static way. So you could argue and say, well, isn't it just because a lot of them were students and obviously students do well? Well, if you take out students, we get the same story, a little bit uh, different uh, uh, results, so not as, as higher growth, but same story. The highest income growth comes to low income earners. So let's look at um, the static versus the dynamic view of income statistics. So um, low income, for instance, how long do people stay in the low income group. The low income group is people with a median income of uh, below, f uh, sorry, uh, an income below 50% of the median income. Some people call them poor. People tend to be out of the low income group. Nine out of 10 tend to be out of the group within five years. That's important to remember. So luckily, if we compare how low-income people were doing 10 years ago to how low-income low people are doing today, it's different people. It's not the same people. People move out of income brackets, uh, luckily. There's been a lot of discussion about um, inequality of wealth since Piketty's book. And if you look at the total uh, population at a single moment, there's going to be a lot of wealth inequality. Because at, a, at any given moment, some people are 23 years old, and since wealth is accumulated savings, and you're not very, you haven't been accumulating savings very long when you're 23, obviously you're not going to have a lot of wealth. Is that a problem? Well, not really, because you don't really need the wealth yet. You'll need it when you get old uh, to pay for your pension. And as you can see, on average, that's what people do. They save through life, and so there isn't really a problem with static um, inequality in wealth. And also, when you look at inequality in income, that's uh, the Gini coefficient in Denmark. If you take a static view, it's 28.9, very precise figure. Um, but if you look at over a lifetime and recognize that to take the 23-year-old again, not much work experience, therefore gets a low wage, as that person matures in the labor market, gets experience, things happen, you follow that person, incomes rise as well. So if you compare a 23-year-old to a 50-year-old, there's going to be a lot of income inequality. But for all intents and purposes, you're comparing the same person. One is young, inexperienced, the other is experienced. Is that a problem? Not really. And over a lifetime, we get a much lower um, uh, uh, income inequality. So, to finish up, we should move away from a static view of statistics and income inequality and inequality in general towards a dynamic. So away from thinking short term to thinking long term. Life is a long term endeavor, as we all know. Um, and also it helps us look at people not as helpless subjects, helpless victims of circumstance, but looking at people as empowered and capable individuals. And I think that's how most of us want to be viewed, actually. And also, it, it helps us see that the solution to problems, social problems, may not be redistribution, but could be to increase opportunity and wealth creation. Thank you very much.